you don't have to wait till the weekend to start having a good night. And of course, joining me now, Avon Liquors, Carrie Hogan. We have Luis and Pedro also in the studio. Uh, but Carrie, what is happening tonight? Because I know, so uh, you know, like I said, the fun starts early. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Avon Liquor, we're, we're involved with Taste of Ale. <clears throat> and also, as, as I've probably said a hundred times, I've been to Portugal last summer. Absolutely fell in love with the country. So we are lucky tonight to host Pedro and Luis uh, at Avon Liquor between four and six as part of the kickoff of Taste of Ale. So we're going to be tasting some lovely Portuguese wines. And I invite you guys to look on the website because there's a lot going on and there's a lot of opportunities and different events that you can meet Luis and Pedro. Mm -hmm. So come see us tonight four to six. 15% off your uh, tasting purchases. So speaking of the Portuguese wines, Luis and Pedro, I know you're both from Portugal. Uh, Pedro, tell me a little bit about how you got involved in the winemaking and about your wines that you've created. Well, I've been, I've been in the wine business for more than 16 years. Of course, always in Portugal. Uh, I was born in Portugal, lived in Portugal my childhood life. Uh, however, I worked with Portuguese wines outside of Portugal. I lived in Canada. Uh, recently, I moved to the U.S. I've uh, been promoting the wines from Esporal, uh, which is a property that's in the south of Portugal, in the region of Alentejo. Uh, and that's really where the focus is for these wines. Uh, we also have a property up in, in the Douro Valley, so northern Portugal. Um, but yeah, it's been, it's been my life for a very long time. I love working with wine. I've learned a lot. I have a great passion for wine and uh, I love it. So, and being here at Taste of Vale is a great opportunity to promote the wines um, and also to be with people like Carrie who supports our wines. And thank you so much for oh, all absolutely. you do. It's, it's, it's easy amazing. when it's so good. Well, thank you, thank you for that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so you know, in a nutshell, <laughs> that's a little bit about uh, what I like to do, and uh, of course my other passion is soccer. Mm -hmm. If you're Portuguese, uh -huh. soccer is your number one religion, <laughs> so that's another passion, so soccer and wine is probably biggest passions I have. Yeah, and when you're passionate about something, I know you can seriously excel in it. So tell me a little bit about the wines that you brought tonight, and will these be at the wine tasting this evening? Yes, yes indeed. Uh, so starting from the wine on the uh, left side, we have a single varietal uh, made with a grape called Verdalho. Uh, Verdalho is actually a grape varietal that's not typical from southern Portugal, from Alentejo. It's actually grape varietal comes from the down region and the Douro up north. Also in the island of Madeira, you do a fortified wine with Verdalho varietal. We decided to plant this varietal in southern Portugal to come up with a dry white wine mm -hmm. that has a profile of, if you like something to compare, like a Sauvignon Blanc, that's probably the, the similar thing. And then we have the Montevelho Red, which is kind of our signature wine because it's uh, it's kind of the engine wine of the company. It produces a big volume, so it kind of pays for my salary. So it's a, <laughs> it's a very special wine. Uh, but it's a blend of Portuguese native varietals, uh, mostly Trincadeira and Aragonês. So very easy to pronounce, mm. correct? Aragonês and Trincadeira. And then it's mixed in with other um, grapes like Syrah, so a little bit more, mm. more common and more, uh, you know, in the market, people see Syrah more than the Portuguese varietals. And then the third one is our flagship red wine. This is our signature Espurão Red Reserve. This is what started the company back in uh, the late 80s. And it's a blend of similar grape varietals from the Montevelho. So we have the Trincadera and Aragonês, but instead of the Syrah, we use a little bit of Cabernet Sauvignon. Mm. Again, a grape that I'm sure it's more familiar. And then we finish off with the fourth wine. It's our Asubiu Red. Asubiu uh, means to whistle in Portuguese. Mm -hmm. The reason why it's whistle, uh, it's because these three are from southern Portugal, so it's kind of a rolling mountains, flat. The Asubio is from the Douro Valley up north, and it's mountain agriculture. Uh, and this is actually in a very steep position in the valley in the afternoon when the wind blows, it actually has a whistle sound. Oh, Thus wow. the name Asubio Red. So this is our Douro Red Wine 2013, made with local varietals, same grape varietals as port wine. Mm -hmm. so. I love red wines, and when I drink white wines, I like the drier kind, so definitely uh, something to try for tonight. And then you can always ask Pedro questions when you see him later this evening. Now, Luis, you're a winemaker as well. Tell me why you got into the business. Well, uh, for me, it was kind of easy and natural because uh, my father decided to become a producer, a wine producer, uh, down in the Alentejo region uh, when I was only eight years old. Uh, he's a dentist, he's from outside the business, and uh, he had a property and decided to uh, become uh, um, one of the major producers, but very small, very unique character, uh, strong um, Portuguese grape, grape varietals blends, and that's how he built his project. So it's very small winery, very focused, very strong character wine, very big aging potential. Mm -hmm. And for me, uh, so I, wove, I was involved in the business from very young, uh, I studied winemaking and decided um, not just work with him, but start with my own company. Mm 
which I did 12 years ago. So at the age of 23 years old, I decided to start my own company on the side of my father. So it's, uh, we're neighbors. <laughs> we still speak with each other. Uh, everyone is curious about it. Yeah, it's, we have a very healthy relationship. Um, but it's same region, same varietals, which is mainly Portuguese grape varietals blends, but very different character on wine. So my father, a bit more classical, bigger aging potential, wines that are released much, much late to the market. Mm -hmm. My wines, they show a bit more uh, fruit character. It's very important uh, for me um, as a winemaker to really express uh, the flavors and the character of the Portuguese grape varietals. Mm -hmm. So basically this is what I've been doing. So tell me a little bit about the individual wines that we'll be tasting for so this evening. So we have here um, Alento Red. This is on my own. Uh, Alento is one of my brands. It's a really uh, typical blend from the region, just Portuguese grape varietals. There is a Aragonês Trincadeira, the same as Pedro had in Montevelho, and then Toriga Nacional, and a, a little bit Alicante Boucher. Um, I, do, I do kind of an um, early harvest to try to keep uh, uh, the freshness a little bit higher. Uh, this is a southern region, and uh, no uh, barrel aging, just stainless steels, just really to express the character of the varietals. They're blended, of course, but uh, from that you can you can really taste uh, the unique flavors of our varietals. Uh, then there is Vinha do Moro and Zagalos. Those are both from my father. Uh, again, blends uh, here mainly Portuguese grape varietals. Uh, again, Aragonês, Trincadeira. Um, Alicante Boucher and a little bit Cabernet Sauvignon in both wines, but then the, we have uh, some barrel aging Portuguese oak, uh, mm -hmm. which is very unique as well. And uh, well, they show different profiles, so if people come and taste, people will be able to 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 see the, the difference. Wine is a thing of beauty, definitely in my eyes. <laughs> they say beauty is in the eye of the beholder. That's very That's true. That's where the wine's very at. True. <laughs> and I might mention too that these wines, very affordable. We're we're tasting from you know, the very affordable level all the way to the expensive level, there's something in here for everybody. And that's what I love about exposing wines at the store because everybody has different uh, tastes and, and this is a great way to talk to, to, talk to these guys and, and find out about the wines too. Perfect. So, and I do want to mention too real quickly, for, uh, Thursday we also have a tasting four to six as part of Taste of Ale, it'll be uh, Rick Motion. So the Motion wines will be there from four to six, 15% off. So want to mention that as well. Great, thank you, Carrie. Yeah, pa Pedro and Luis, you can always uh, ask them more questions this evening when you go to the wine tasting event. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. And have you. fun tonight. Thank thank you. Again, the wine tasting is at Avon Liquor from 4 p.m. until 6 p.m. this evening. You can uh, ask Pedro and Luis and Carrie more questions about all of the wine that they have in store. Coming up next, we're taking it over to Ashley. She has a quick look at your weather forecast.